opportunity that you have. This would be a good time for us all to silence our cell phones if we haven't done that yet so that we're not disturbed by those uh, during our worship. Also be uh, a good time to remind you to get a newsletter from the foyer. If you didn't grab one of those yet, there's a lot of information in there about upcoming events. Uh, just a few things uh, that are listed in the newsletter. First of all, Kay Smith is home and resting, and we need to keep her in our prayers. Oh, she's here. Yay, I'm glad she made it. Uh, good to see her here. Jill Finch is home, but still taking high-powered antibiotics, so we need to keep her in our prayers. Uh, I learned that Mike Bowman is going to have to redo his rotator cuff surgery uh, at the end of this month, and so that's very unfortunate. We want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, Tatiana Kirkland ha has uh, had some uh, surgery and is home recovering from that and still in some pain, but she is very grateful for our prayers and some food that was taken over there to their uh, home as well. Uh, I put in the newsletter that Kurt Bunch, Chris's brother, is in the ICU at Cartersville, but actually he's been moved now to room 545 and is improving a little bit. Uh, he has damage to his vertebrae that happened during the fall, they think, but uh, he is being well taken care of there at the hospital, but pray for Kirk Bunch that he will continue to improve. Uh, also, we're pay praying for Pam Wright. I understand that she is doing better, and we're thankful uh, for that improvement. Also, Steve Hayes, uh, he's been battling uh, with uh, ear infection and sinus infection for some time, and so pray for him. Uh, and also Diane Smith and uh, the battle that she's uh, uh, dealing with with her parents' health. Keep her in your prayers in a special way, uh, as well as uh, Larry and Claire Hyde as well. Uh, let's see. Keep the Barton family in your prayers. Janice passed away, and her memorial service is here at the uh, building today. The visitation starts at 2 o'clock. And the memorial service starts at 3 o'clock. And so I hope that you can come out uh, and support the family this afternoon. Also, I've got a note in the uh, bulletin about the great job that Grant Walker, Timothy Gunnels, and Anderson Adams did on Wednesday night. Uh, getting ready for their lads to leaders, doing speeches and leading songs and reading scripture. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Uh, Let's see, check the bulletin board down the hall near my office for a new list of members who would benefit uh, from cards. You can fill those cards out and address the envelopes and then drop them back off on the bulletin board and they'll be mailed for you. 
And then don't forget about Friday evening will be our family fun night. We're going to meet at the bowling alley. And we got the uh, Holy Roller Trophy. Uh, it's actually called Bible Bowler 2024. And uh, somebody will leave with a nice trophy on, uh, on Friday night. We'll meet there at 6.30 at the bowling alley. And pizza and drinks will be provided. And everyone uh, is invited to come out and join in with that as well. Uh, let's see, after the final amen is said this morning, if you want to mail out some cards through the evangelism card program, then just come up to the front, uh, and Austin will have uh, some suggestions and addresses for us to send cards uh, after the final amen today. And then uh, I have here another reminder about the uh, uh, cooling assistance program. We just, seems like we just announced this uh, for the heating assistance program, but some of our members benefited from that. And, and so uh, it won't be long, starting April 30th, the cooling assistance program will help uh, with the power bill for those that qualify. And you can see Brian for more information about this, but I'll put this up on the bulletin board as well. April 3rd. April 3rd, I'm sorry. April 3rd. I also have a note here that says, uh, thank you for your thoughtfulness, your kindness, and your generous heart. With Christian love, John and Martha Holbert. And we're certainly uh, mindful of that family uh, at the loss of uh, Sue Ford as well, uh, along with uh, others that are grieving lost loved ones as well. I think that's everything that I have now. If you have other things. Oh, that's right, the Derones. Uh, Cindy is improving a little bit, and we're thankful for that. Uh, Sandy says that it seems like Cindy has turned the corner, and we are very grateful for that. Amen. And they are grateful for your prayers. Keep those prayers going up. You know, I mentioned in the Bible class hour that uh, Joe and Sandy are not in the best health either, and so pray for that entire family, uh, especially Cindy, as uh, she strives to improve as well. <laughs> Glad that they're able to be here today. And we'll keep, uh, we'll keep that, prayer, that family in our prayers for sure. That's all that I have now. We'll turn it over to our song leader. I was wondering if I get to compete with those rails up, Brian. Right? <laughs> you get the rails? 226. I might, I might have a chance. The bumpers. 226. We get our worship. Sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world I have have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe displayed, then sings my Yeah. 
sing, my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sing, my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's a parish mountain, mountain to my soul. The He's a fairy stuff to thousands to my soul. Oh, he all my griefs have taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty time. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me on his time. Though all the world forsake me, through Jesus I shall safely reach the shore. He's a hilly of the valley, the bright morning star. He's a fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. Oh, Within my life, my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. He's a fabric of ten thousand to my soul. Scripture reading an open prayer number 132. 132. Sing <clears throat> verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4. Does Jesus care when my heart is pain to deeply for mirth and song? As a third that's present and cares distress and the way grows weary and long. Oh yes, he cares, I know he cares, his heart is touched with my when the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless dread and fear? As the day I fades in the deep night shades, does it care? Enough to be near. Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. 
Does Jesus care when I sang in my to the dearest on earth to me? And my sad heart aches till the little he breaks his heart. To him does he see? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know my Savior cares. This morning we'll be reading from Psalms 141, verses 3 and 4. Psalms 141, verses 3 and 4. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. Do not let me eat of their delicacies. Yeah. <coughs> As I was reviewing the prayer list this morning, just for <coughs> this congregation and those that we are associated with, I noticed there is close to 40 names of those who have been in the hospital who are in the hospital, who have been sick, who have had surgeries, who are recovering, who are home in serious pain, hurting, those that have fallen, those that have been in ICU, those that are to have procedures. We have all the way from uh, the youngest, who have been injured to the absolute oldest in our group, congregation, who are in desperate need of your prayers, your loving thoughts, your kindness. We also have a host of students. We have a host of caregivers. We have associations with police officers nurses, doctors. We have a nation that's in decay. <coughs> Brethren, our prayer list is long. Just remember all those as we go to God in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this worship assembly on the first day of the week on such a beautiful Lord's Day. Father, we we pray for all those that we have mentioned, including all those that have lost loved ones. We know we have so many in our congregation. Father, we pray that you would be with all the families of all those that we've mentioned, that you would be with our country, that we would, as a country, we would turn our face back to you, Father, for your strength to your word which guides us. Father, in our Sunday school lesson this morning, we learn <clears throat> from Steve's lesson in Philippians that we need to keep our eyes on you and that we know that our hope is in Jesus. Father, we pray for Brother Rick and his sweet family as he brings his lesson to us this morning. We thank you for the work that he is doing here and as we all work together. Father, we pray that the things that we say and do will be well-pleasing in your sight in this worship. We thank you for the privilege of prayer 
We ask for forgiveness of things that we have done and will do wrong. <coughs> May we be humble children looking unto Jesus, the hope of our salvation. May we, may our faith strengthen each and every day as we study your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for precious Jesus. Please be with us as we worship. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Seven hundred forty two. Seven forty two. In verses one, three, and five. One, three, and five. <coughs> Staying focused on the ball means that you'll hit the ball more consistently. You'll make the plays that need to be made and hopefully win the game. But if you lose focus during the game, it could cause you to strike out. It'll cause you to make errors and possibly cause you to lose the game. Well, these same principles can be applied when G with Jesus and keeping him in complete focus. Staying focused on Christ means turning away from sin, staying in his word, and going to heaven. But if you lose focus on Christ, it will cause you to sin. It will cause you to fall short of his glory and ultimately losing heaven. This morning, I want to use the baseball it is made up of three unique components. The core, the yarn, and the uh, leather.
the Lord's Supper. It consists of three aspects, the past, the present, and the future. The past, which will be represented by the core, it is, a rem it is to remind us of Jesus' death upon the cross. The present, which will be represented by the yarn, it is, it is to remind us that we are one body in Christ. The future, represented by the leather, it reminds us of Jesus' promise. So as we look back to the cross and we focus on his death, the core, the yarn, and the leather can now be laced together with the blood of Jesus and it is finished. Righteousness has been completed, uh, has been perfected, Romans 3.25. Divine justice was satisfied, 2 Peter 1.3. Blood was shed, Hebrews 9.22. Redemption was paid, Ephesians 1.7. Sins were forgiven, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Reconciliation was achieved, Romans 5.11. Death was conquered, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 26. Salvation was secured, Hebrews 5.9. In 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 16, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? <laughs> the bread which, is, which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have come together around this table today, Lord. We just pray that uh, you would bless this bread, this unleavened loaf, Father, that represents the broken body of Jesus. Father, I pray that we will partake it in a way that is uh, worthy to thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray for the fruit of the land. Dear Lord, once again we come to thee. We thank you for this opportunity to drink from this cup, this fruit of the vine, this representation of the blood that Jesus has shed. Father, we pray that you would bless, bless it and bless each one that partakes, and it would be done in a manner that is pleasing to thee. In Jesus' name, amen. that ends the Lord's Supper and at this time for convenience we're going to enter into another part of worship which, <clears throat> excuse me, which is giving the tray is in the back if you have not had an opportunity to do that you can do that at the end of our service let us pray Heavenly Father we are thankful for this day Father we're thankful for all the blessings you've given us Father we're thankful for especially for those uh, blessings that we have received through spiritual gifts Father we just pray that you would uh, take these funds, Father, bless them. May it be used to spread your word throughout this town, throughout this country, and throughout the world. Father, we just pray that, that we would always be thankful of our jobs and our homes and our cars and everything, Father, that you have blessed us with. Father, we pray that we would do this with an open heart, open mind, and not do it grudgingly. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to bless us and forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Mark in your books, number 103. 103, I think some encouragement. 
four lessons to sing number 613. Number 613. Sing all six verses. 613. Take my life and let it be consecrate, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them fill in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move, and the impulse of Thy love. Take my tells us here in Psalm 141, uh, 141 and verse number 3, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. You know, the, the tongue is a very powerful force. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that it holds the power of life and death. Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And so because the tongue is so powerful, the mouth is so, can uh, be so damaging, we need the Lord to help us control our tongue, don't we? Uh, the uh, psalmist here is, is writing a psalm of prayer. And in this prayer, he prays that the Lord will basically help him control his speech. When he talks about the, the Lord setting a guard over his mouth and uh, watching his lips, he's not talking about what he eats and drinks. He's talking about the words that he uses and the power that those words can hold. Uh, in this verse, the psalmist pleads for that divine assistance in guarding his words. You know, when I think about the idea here of setting a watch uh, over our mouths, I think about... Uh, the wording that is used in Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 66. When they took Jesus' body down off the cross and 
put it in the tomb. And they, the Bible says that they set a watch over the sepulcher of Jesus. And so those, uh, uh, those Jewish soldiers came out to, uh, to make sure that nobody would try to steal the body of Jesus. And so they did their best to set a guard up. And that's the idea here. The idea of the guard is like a military term. Uh, like they set a, a watch in the night in the military, uh, a, a guard to, to stand watch and make sure that no, no danger comes to those that are around. And so the idea of setting a watch over our mouth is a, is a powerful metaphor here. And that's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes this morning. First of all, let's talk about the need to set a guard over our mouths. <laughs> You know, you think about the uh, prevalence of what the Bible calls unbridled speech. James 3, verses 5 through 8. The Bible says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. A little further down it says, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And so we need God's help, don't we? Uh, often we allow our mouths to shoot off unbridled. In other words, we don't take care in the things that we say. And uh, sometimes that can be da very damaging for the people around us that bear the brunt of the words that we use. And so, no surprise then that uh, King David would pray that the Lord would guard his mouth. The destructive power of careless words. Uh, Proverbs 12 and verse number 18. The Bible says, There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. And so the choice is up to us then. We can use our tongues like a sword to slice, to cut, and to stab, or we can use our tongues, uh, our mouths like a good medicine to heal so that uh, so the people can be, have peace and happiness around us. Amen. And the choice is up to us. The importance of controlling the tongue is certainly seen in the scripture, isn't it? James 1, and verse number 26, the Bible says, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Do you see the connection there? that the Holy Spirit made with a person guarding their speech and the connection that he makes with their religion being uh, either good or worthless, depending on the kind of speech that they use. Now, I think what God has in mind here is that if we're out there in the world not caring about what we say or how we say it, we're shooting off our mouths and using our tongues as a weapon and hurting those around us, then it's not going to do any good to come in here on Sunday and, uh, and worship God if you're out there living like the world and hurting everybody around you. Your worship is vain if you don't bridle your speech. <clears throat> Ephesians 4, and verse number 29, the Bible says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You know, we, we have to be careful about saying mean, hurtful things, but also as Christians, we need to think about the example that we set in the kind of speech that we use. Sometimes even Christians can fall into the old pattern of using vulgar, crass uh, language that Christians should use. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, that we have to talk like Mary Poppins, <laughs> but... We need, to, we need to be careful about the kind of language that we use, especially out there in the world because people are always watching, aren't they? They're always listening. Uh, I remember years and years ago, I worked under a, a wonderful eldership at a nice country congregation, and one of the elders uh, really befriended me, and I got to spend a lot of time with him. And I remember the first time I heard him use vulgar language, and what a... What a clash it was. How it made me think differently about that 
about that good man. He was good. He just didn't control his tongue the way that he should. And I think about what people in the world must think about Christians if they hear us out of one side of our mouths claim that we are followers of Jesus and claim that we're concerned about their souls and setting good examples before them, and then out of the other side of our mouth they hear vulgar language or dirty jokes or uh, you know, those kind, that kind of speech that ought to be avoided by us as Christians. And so there is the need then that the psalmist expressed here for God to help him guard his mouth to set a watch over the door of his lips. Why does God need to get involved in this? Well, we've seen already, but uh, that James says, the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. What that means is you need God's help because you can't do it by yourself. If you try to do it by yourself, you'll end up talking like the world around you and being <laughs> influenced by what society says is normal or right and good. Instead of what God says. And so we need to let God help us in, in the control of our minds. Uh, you know, I uh, see this, uh, this passage about the tongue can no man tame. It makes me think about uh, wild animals. You know, and you, if you go to the zoo, most of our interaction with wild animals like uh, lions and gorillas are probably in the zoo. I don't know uh, how many of you have ever been on a safari maybe and seen that kind of animal, but I never have. Most of my interaction with those animals are in the zoo. Well, it just so happens this week I saw a video, maybe you saw it on the internet, of somebody who accidentally let a big old silverback gorilla out into the area of his... Uh, uh, of his place in the zoo while there were two zookeepers out there. Two female zookeepers that were cleaning the, uh, cleaning the area, getting ready to feed the, put out the food for the apes or whatever it was. And this big old silverback got let out in that area. And that, that gorilla could have ripped those people limb from limb. Luckily, somebody else distracted the animal while the uh, while the zookeepers kind of scurried into this area where the gorilla couldn't reach them. Another video came up where a drunk guy uh, in some other country jumped into the lion's uh, enclosure at the local zoo and sort of stumbled over to the lion and started hollering at it and pointing around, and the lion didn't even attack him. I thought, that lion can rip that guy to shreds. Uh, well, the idea here is we think those animals are tame sometimes when we're looking at them through the fence. But you don't want to get too close. Because even though an animal might seem tame, it can go off at any minute. And that's the way our tongues are. We might think we've got them under control. We might think because of long-standing practice that, uh, you know, that we, we've got it all, we've got it all whipped. But the tongue's not as easy to control as that. And so we need God to help us. Uh, we need to pray this same prayer that David prayed, don't we? Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. There are blessings that come from that. Uh, number one, if God, if God helps guard our mouths, the things that we say, then we avoid sin and regret. In Proverbs 30, uh, 21, in verse number 23, the Bible says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Well, I've seen the flip side of that a lot of times. Do you ever say something and immediately, immediately you knew that you made a mistake? <clears throat> I've, said, I've done that many times. Wish I could take back that last thing that I said. Take back those words, but... Once they're out there, it's hard to get them back in. I heard an illustration one time about a fellow who had gone around and uh, spread rumors about, a, about somebody he didn't, was mad at in the community there. 
And then it started uh, eating at him. He started uh, feeling guilty for it. And he went to that person and he said, I'm sorry I went and started a bunch of rumors, but, uh, but I want to uh, I try to undo it and I want to try to make things right. And the fellow went out onto the front porch on a windy day and he tore a pillow open and all the feathers flew out of the pillow. And he said, you might as well try to gather up all those feathers that you that blew into the wind to try to undo that rumor that you started. Once those words are out there, you can't get them back. Uh, they're gone. And uh, if we control our tongues, it's so much easier for us to live the way that God wants us to live. We can also control our tongues and it shows our wisdom and understanding. Proverbs 10 and verse number 19 says, In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. That's very simple. The more you talk and the less that talk is controlled, the more you sin. And the quieter you are and the more you control yourself, then the wiser that you are and the wiser that you look to everybody around you. We also promote peace and unity when we keep our mouth closed and let God, God guard the things that we say. Proverbs 15, verse number 1 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. And so we can be peacemakers or we can be troublemakers. And it all depends upon the kind of words that we use. You know, also, we need to guard our example very carefully, don't we? We already talked about the damage we can do out there in the world when we claim to be Christians and then use our mouths in damaging or uh, vulgar ways. It keeps us from being the kind of example of Christ that we ought to be out there in the world. When we're out there in the world, people ought to see the kind of life that we're living and we ought to draw them in because of Christ in us, not the other way around. We shouldn't push them away because of our own sinful examples. And so the greatest blessing of a guarded mouth is the good example that we are walking in the footsteps of Jesus. What does it take, though, to do this? What are some practical steps that we can take to make sure that we use our, our speech the way that God wants us to? Well, number one, we need to meditate more on the Word of God, don't we? Study and meditate on the Scriptures. Psalm 119, verse number 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we hide God's word in our heart, it gives us more self-control. And importantly, it shows us the kind of language that we ought to use and ought not to use as Christians to be the kind of examples that we should. Another thing that will help us if we want to guard our mouths is we need to think before we speak. You know any? Do you know people that seem to have no filter when it comes to the things that they say? That they think before that they speak before they think. The Bible says in James one verse number nineteen. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. But God does want us to speak. Otherwise, we couldn't preach the gospel. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We can't do that if we are mute, if we just never say anything. But what God wants us to do is think carefully before we speak. Be, be swift to hear, but slow to speak and slow to wrath. And then another thing we need to do is we need to ask God help, uh, ask for God's help on a regular basis. We need to pray that the Lord will help us uh, through His providence and through the study of His Word to better control our tongues. Psalm 19, verse number 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Dave, if a man like David, who was described as a man after God's own heart, needs to pray, 
as often as he did for the Lord to help him in the kind of speech that he used? What about us? You know, we're not, we might not be a king like David is, but we are priests. We are priests in God's kingdom, and we are children of God. And so we need to heed the psalmist's prayer here and guard our lips. Ask for God to help, to help guard our mouths. A watchful mouth brings honor to God and blessings to others. We need to commit to speaking the kind of words that God wants us to speak. Here's a little tip for that. Before you say anything, run what you're going to say through a little test in your mind. And ask yourself, is what I'm about to say true? Because if it's not, you don't need to say it. We need to provide things honest in the sight of all men. We need to ask ourselves, if it's true, is it kind? Because you don't have to say everything that you know. Sometimes, sometimes uh, we say things that are true but unkind to the people around us. Well, that's not what Christians ought to do. We ought to be kind. Number three, is it necessary? You know, we don't have to tell everything that we know. Sometimes uh, the things that we say are better left unsaid. And then finally, number four, is it edifying? The Bible says that we need to... Uh, Provide that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And so is it true? Is it kind? Is it necessary? And is it edifying? That will help us as we seek the Lord to help us to guard our lips and to use our tongue wisely uh, as we strive to be servants of God. You know, we need to, we need to think more about what we say and how we say it. Because of the damage that the tongue can do, but also because of the good that it can do in the lives of people around us. Saying a kind, encouraging, helpful word can make all the difference in a person's life. And we need to be that kind of people. The kind of people that lifts others up uh, sp spiritually and emotionally. And we do that to a great extent with the kind of words that we use. If you're here this morning, you're not a Christian, we would plead with you to become a child of God through obedience to the gospel plan of salvation. It involves hearing what God teaches in the New Testament. That means uh, studying His Word. Believing that Jesus is the Son of God, John 3.16. Having enough faith to repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5. Coming forward to confess the name of Christ before men and then to be immersed in water for the remission of your sins. If we can help you do that this morning, we want to. If you're here as a Christian, you realize there's sin in your life standing between you and God, that you need to take care of that sin in a God-approved manner, then all you have to do is repent and pray that God will forgive you and He will. And if we can pray with you and for you in a public way, we'd be more than happy to do that. Just let us know of your need. Right now, as together we stand and as we sing. Come to Jesus, He will save you. Though your sins have been done before. If you give your heart to Jesus, He will make
thank you for the, uh, all the opportunity that we have to learn about your word so that we may grow in it and that we may become better servants in the kingdom. We pray for those who were not with us this morning, for those who have chose not to be with us, that they would return again to you, and for those who are unable to be here, that you would be with them and provide them comfort and that they would be able to come home soon. We pray that as we depart that you'll go with each and every one of us that will remember the words spoken this morning that they will help us to be better servants in your kingdom and that we can go out into the world and be a light, a shining light leading those in darkness to you. We ask for forgiveness of our sins, Father, and we pray that you'll be with us always. Thank you for your son. It's in his most holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Anita. She's the mayor's oldest girl. That's
Jesus.